For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by the night sky. That passion to explore the heavens above has led me on a journey to image the incredible objects of our solar system, galaxy, and beyond. Through this series, I hope to share my experiences with you as we go out to explore the night sky together through the joys and struggles of astrophotography. Our object tonight is the star Vega. It's a part of the Lyra constellation, and it's one of my favorite regions of space to image this time of year from where I live. Not only are we gonna get one of the brightest, most beautiful stars in the night sky through our imaging equipment, but we're also gonna get two other incredible objects, one of which is the double-double binary star system, and the third is one of my favorite targets in the night sky and it's called the Ring Nebula. So let's talk about the equipment that we're gonna be using tonight. I'm shooting with a Canon DSLR, and I'm gonna be using the Samyang 135 millimeter lens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this equipment and put it on a polar aligned tracking mount. Tonight, that's gonna be the Skyguider Pro tracking mount. Let's go over right now and take a look at the equipment that we're gonna be using to image Vega and the other objects in the constellation Lyra. The equipment is set up, it is targeted on the constellation Lyra, and it is time to start imaging our target tonight. I'm under a Bortle 5 sky, and that really limits the amount of light gathering that I can do on a nightly basis. I've decided not to use a light pollution filter because of the specific target that I'm going after this evening. But even with a light pollution filter, light pollution is a huge problem that we have that really can limit what you're able to capture, even with software helping out when we get to post-processing. The best solution for all of this is to get to as dark of a sky as possible when you're looking to image anything, regardless of how bright or dim it is. I happen to be imaging for my house tonight, so we're gonna be limited to about a 20 second exposure of the constellation Lyra, picking up Vega first and foremost. Now, when you're getting to the point of focusing on an object, I think a really good tip for this process is to use something called a Botanov mask. All you have to do is simply put it on your lens or your telescope and align the spikes of the Botanov mask until they're perfectly in line, meaning that you have a sharp focus for the entire evening. It's always a good idea to check on focus throughout your imaging session, but this takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Just be sure to take it off after you use it. I have left this on a few times and have messed up a good 30 minutes of frames. It was beautiful images, but I didn't want spikes going through the stars I was shooting that evening. So let's make sure we have all of our settings dialed in and let's start imaging the constellation Lyra at our 20 second exposure length. So I've been imaging Vega for about 30 minutes and I've noticed that some clouds have started to come through. You actually can't see them with the naked eye, but at 20 second exposures, they are definitely showing up. So far, it's only messing with the brightest stars in the image. It's possible I'll be able to use this data. It's possible I won't. That's all a part of the process of doing this. I am gonna keep the imaging session going because I think it's a possibility that they'll move out, but I'll come back out again in about 15 or 20 minutes to see how things are looking. It 
and the clouds have gotten worse, much worse. Uh, I've stopped imaging the target itself and we're now gonna move on to capture the dark, flat, and bias frames for the next step of the process. These frames are gonna help us clear up any imperfections or distortions in the sensor, along with anything that may be going on in terms of aberrations from our lens. I've got videos on how to do each step of that process, along with almost everything else mentioned in this video and that we'll cover in a few minutes, and I'll be sure to leave a link to those videos in the description below. Let's set up for the dark, flat, and bias frames, and then we'll move inside to go over our post-processing. After a late night out imaging our targets, I've gotten a good night's sleep, and now it's time for us to dive into the data that was collected of Vega, the Double Double, and the Ring Nebula. Let's begin by previewing the pictures that were taken to see what we're gonna keep and not keep for our stacking and post-processing coming up. So as I'm going through these images, I'm first going to take out the most obvious ones that were bad frames or where something occurred to the camera while it was capturing it along the way. Looking here, I think the cloud coverage was a little more prominent than I had expected. If we zoom in here and take a look at Vega, that's not horrible, but not the best. And if we go down here and look at the Ring Nebula, that one didn't seem to be impacted too much due to how dim it was. The double-double, not too bad either. So the decision I've now got to make is how many of these frames do I keep or how many do I not keep? Well, the, <laughs> we've got a, uh, a firefly that flew through the frame there. Uh, software can take that out down the road. Now that we've decided what images we're actually going to be keeping, we need to figure out how to stack them into one file to enhance and bring out the faint details of this image. To do that, I'm gonna be using a free piece of software called Deep Sky Stacker. So let's load that up and take a look at the settings that we're gonna be using to bring out some fine detail of Vega, the Double Double, and the Ring Nebula. And as we load up Deep Sky Stacker, we're going to be looking here at the settings that we're going to be using to combine all of the frames captured the night before. Our light frames of the target, our dark frames, our bias frames, and our flat frames. And just to double check that the recommended settings are similar to what I picked here. Now it's actually suggesting that I go with a different setting because of the number of frames that I have, and I'll, I'll trust the software on that and change that setting. We go down here and click OK, and now we have our images being stacked into one. We've got all of our pictures stacked into one file that we can now use for the final steps of our post-processing. I'm going to load up PixInsight right now to show you some of the techniques that I use to bring out the faint, fine details in these deep sky objects. Let's begin by taking a look at how you can remove some of the light pollution through post-processing. Out of all the features of PixInsight, the one feature that has me recommend this software to those of you who are serious about getting into astrophotography is the ability to remove a good bit of the light pollution from the image with a process called dynamic background extraction. By placing these markers on parts of the image that only contain the background of space, we can adjust our settings to remove a lot of the gradient obscuring our deep sky objects. After working on this picture for about 45 minutes, I realized I wasn't exactly thrilled with how much cloud coverage ended up in my final image. So I actually went back to the part of the process dealing with Deep Sky Stacker and took out 
about 35 minutes worth of frames that were the cloudiest in the image. That's going to lower my amount of data down to about 38 minutes, but I think the resulting image is going to be much more pleasing and going to be more realistic to what the sky conditions were during the best part of the night when I was imaging. After several hours of imaging and post-processing, we end up with our final image of the constellation Lyra. Of the three objects imaged, the most impressive to me is the Ring Nebula. Even though it's really small in this image, being able to take a picture of an object 1400 light years away that shows the remnants of a star that blew away its outer gas layers is truly remarkable to me and shows the glory of the heavens above. Thank you all so much for watching, and clear skies from late night astronomy.